what's going on youtube in today's video we are going over probably the question that most of you guys are currently asking as we watch bitcoin return back to its all-time high is now a good time to buy bitcoin the answer is simply is, is not going to be probably what you want to hear um but it's going to be the best answer in the long term right so i'm sure a lot of you in 2017 probably might have bought around this range right um and we're finally back you're either now finally in profits or you've sold too early and you're you want to get back in into it you want to jump right back into bitcoin but you're not sure if now is the right time or maybe you're just brand new you know and you're looking to make your first investment in bitcoin or maybe you already have bitcoin but you want to add more to your position there could be a you know a hundred different you know scenarios on why you're looking to add more bitcoin to your portfolio so we're going over what i believe is probably the best thing that you should do in this situation and really in any situation when that when you're trying to ask yourself whether or not you should make an investment in bitcoin at the time or any other long-term investment right so we're gonna start with you know um the first thing should you or should you not buy bitcoin right now so i mean the answer is simply is, is not gonna be probably what you want to hear um but it's gonna be the best answer in the long term right so i've we've spoken about this before i've told you guys i've answered this in the um in the questions when we do the q a's on instagram uh, i've made a video regarding this before when bitcoin was at a way cheaper price as well but let's talk about it dollar cost averaging guys so should you buy bitcoin the answer is yes should you buy bitcoin not the current current price the answer is also yes now should you put all of your money at one time the answer is probably not let's talk about dollar cost averaging so what is dollar cost averaging dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy in which an investor decide this uh, divides up the total amount to be invested across a periodic purchase of a target asset in an effort to reduce the impact of volatility on the overall purchase so what does that mean guys that means if you split up let's say you want to invest ten thousand dollars in bitcoin now you could either just throw ten thousand dollars in right now at this moment or you can split that investment across a 12 month period or a 10 month period a thousand dollars a month right so that would pro would be the safest way to invest uh such a you know a large sum because you're averaging out your position so now it no matter uh it, it no longer matters where you know whether you're entering now or not because you're going to continuously better your position regardless of which way uh bitcoin goes so if you buy now at nineteen thousand and then the price drops to ten thousand let's say next month and you buy again now your average entry is going to be about fourteen thousand five hundred versus just putting in ten thousand dollars in at nineteen thousand and then it dropping down to ten thousand now you're down you're going to be down about fifty percent of your investment right so the idea here is instead of making one lump sum investment when buying bitcoin figure out what that number is that you want to buy and then split that up over a monthly period over a weekly period whatever you decide to do just split it up so that your entries aren't just in one entry you want to average out your entry whether it goes up or down you know what i mean so if you buy it today at nineteen thousand, and you buy again next week at twenty thousand, your average entry is nineteen thousand five hundred. all right so um so you're still you'll still be in profit but you're you're making the the safer the safer investment right so there's pros and cons to the strategy just like any other strategy of course um so to continue on what on what the what dollar cost averaging is 
The purchases occur regardless of the asset's price and at regular intervals. And in effect, this strategy removes much of the detailed work of attempting to time the market in order to make purchases of equities at the best prices. Dollar cost averaging is also known as the cost stint dollar plan. I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. I'm going to just take, take that off. <laughs> no need for that nonsense in there, right? Um, <clears throat> so understanding dollar cost averaging. Uh, dollar cost averaging is a tool an investor can use to build a savings and to build savings and wealth over a long period. It's also a way for an investor to neutralize short term volatility. So that's perfect for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is very, very volatile overall, right? Uh, especially short term. So in order to neutralize that, what you want to do is spread out your entries, right? Um, although it's one of the more basic techniques, dollar cost averaging is still one of the best strategies for beginning investors looking to trade. So that's why this is what I, uh, recommend to beginning beginner investors that are just trying to get their feet wet. You know, they're trying to understand how the Bitcoin and crypto space works overall. Um, this is the best way to get your feet wet while also exposing yourself to some of the, some, to, to Bitcoin itself and while you're still learning. So over the period of time where you, when you're averaging out your entry, you're going to at the same time be learning, um, which is great because you need to learn and you need to know what it is you're investing in. So, um, so let's jump into the, some examples, right? Um, so there's this website called DCABTC.com. You guys can check this website out. Um, so what this does is DCA stands for dollar cost averaging. BTC stands for Bitcoin. So you can kind of go back in time and, you know, play out different scenarios. So for this particular scenario, we can pretend that we set up a hundred dollar purchases, right? Every two weeks for three years, starting three years ago, right? So if you went ahead and did that, this exact scenario, this is exactly what it would look like. So, and it tells you here, your final numbers, the total invested in three years would be $7,900. Your, the value of your investment will currently be $11,830. So you would be up 49.75% overall, right? So you can, you can watch it here exactly how that would have looked like, right? A hundred dollars and two hundred two ninety two two fifty nine, dollars 52, 359, and it just continues, continues up all the way up through all the ups and downs. It doesn't matter because you're averaging in the entire time. So the, the most you would have been up at any point in time would have been 12,194. And what you'd be currently at right now is 11,830. So you see here how it works, right? And now if you do this compared to some to a different assets that you can invest in over the same amount of time, um, using the same strategy, buying the same amount, we can compare it to, to the, the Dow Jones and we're going to compare it to gold, right? And you're going to see that all of them go up, right? So even if you, the, the second best performing one would be gold, and you would have been at 10,743. So that's uh, $1,100 less made than Bitcoin. And the Dow Jones, you would be at 8,652. So that's way less. Now you're talking about $3,000 less than Bitcoin. So you see that Bitcoin is the number one asset for you to have invested in three years ago and continues to be today. Um, now the best way to, to make these investments is to dollar cost average in so that you have the best entry possible. Now, like I said, there's both pros and cons to dollar cost averaging, right? Um, here's an example on dollar cost averaging. So um, investing in Bitcoin with no dollar cost average averaging example, right? In, on January 1st, 2018, John decides to purchase $5,000 worth of Bitcoin. The Bitcoin price at the time was $13,800 per coin, which means that John now owns 0 0.362 Bitcoin, right? Now, investing in Bitcoin using the dollar cost averaging example. It, on January 1st, 2018, Alice decides she wants to purchase $5,000 worth of Bitcoin, the same amount as John, right? 
However, instead of investing the entire amount today, she decides to purchase $500 every month for 10 months. 10 months later, Alice now owns 0.61 Bitcoin. That's almost twice as much as John, even though they both invested the same amount of money. So you see, she would have had over that 10 month period, 0.61 BTC. John, just because he, he didn't have patience, he just wanted to buy it all at once, has 0.362. So <clears throat> you will see that Alice now has way, almost double the amount of money that John has because she used dollar cost averaging and he just bought in one lump sum, okay? So the pros and cons of dollar cost averaging, um, it reduces, the, the pros is it reduces the risk of buying the tops. So if you're dollar cost averaging, even if you buy the top today, when it does drop, you're gonna keep buying, you know, when it drops on, the, on all those drops, which is gonna average out your entry size. Um, so over the long term, it's going to give you the best entry size, right? Um, another another pro of dollar cost averaging, it doesn't require a big upfront investment. So you don't have to invest all that money now. Um, and this is especially an important benefit if you don't feel comfortable with investing your savings into Bitcoin and instead you want to take small chunks uh, from your paycheck every month. Right. So from, you don't have to commit a massive amount of capital from day one, uh, which makes this a very, very great pro for dollar cost averaging. Um, the next one here is uh, it gives you it gives you time to understand Bitcoin. So this is for the beginners that have never invested in the space and are, that are new here um, by spreading out your investments, you're going to be learning as you go along you're going to be learning as you continue to invest um so this is a great way to continue to learn while still investing in it you know small amounts at a time um <clears throat> you get number four you get opportunities to buy bitcoin at steep discounts because of any drops uh you will have an opportunity to be buying during those drops right so a great example is november 2018 uh when bitcoin's price crashed bitcoin was trading for months in the six thousand per coin range and then suddenly it dropped to three point five thousand. right so you would have been able to buy both at the six thousand and at 3500 you know so needless to say if you would have bought at any of those at that point um, during while your dollar cost averaging right now will be worth a lot of money, right? Uh, number five, it reduces emotional stress. So um, you know when you're when you're putting a lot of money and if you buy now at nineteen thousand, that's it, then you're gonna be stressed out if the price goes down to eighteen thousand, seventeen thousand, or any anything like that, right? Especially if you invest a big amount up front. So dollar cost averaging is gonna reduce that emotional stress, and you'll be able to to, to be a lot more chill about it and uh just kind of watch it and know that you're even if it does drop you're gonna be able to buy in again and average out that entry right so it's not it's not that bad now the cons of dollar cost averaging it eliminates the possibility of buying exact bottoms so you know that's one thing you know um if you would have bought at 3500 but you're all also dollar cost averaging you know 3500 was also would have been the best entry price but at the time, you don't know that. There's no way to know where that exact bottom is. So even though, yeah, if you would have bought at 3,500, that one lump sum, you would be, you would have made, you know, a crazy amount of money. So at that point, that would have been the best time to just enter with all your money. But because we never know at the time, at the moment, um, we only know once it already happens, right? So that's why dollar cost averaging over the long term is the, the safest and better option, right? Um, it takes time to get desired exposure. So that's another thing. If you want to put $10,000 in and you're doing $1,000 a month, you know, at first you only have $1,000 exposure. So it's, it's not much. So it's going to take at least about five months for you to get at least half that money. in. So that's another, you know, another con to it. And uh, the last one is potentially lower performance in a strong bull market. So currently we're in a bull market. And if your dollar cost averaging, uh, you're making profits regardless, but you're not making as much as if you just did one lump sum at, uh, you know, when the price was a lot lower, right? So at the start of the bull market. 
So those are the cons, there's pros and cons to every strategy. So you just got kind of got to weigh it out and decide what's best for you. Um, if you're a beginner, my recommendation is to definitely use this strategy and dollar cost average because look, you always got to look at history when you're investing in anything in history. We did go up here, but then look at this drop off, right? So not saying that and there's no way to know whether or not Bitcoin is going to, you know, have that same drop off. It did. Um, I don't believe it will. There could definitely be a correction. I don't believe we'll have that correction down to 3000, you know, um, but if there is a correction and your dollar cost averaging, then you're going to still get the best price possible, right? Um, if there isn't a correction, then you're still exposed to Bitcoin. So it's a kind of a win win, right? Um, so that's why my recommendation, if you're, you don't know whether or not to invest in Bitcoin right now is to go ahead and start to dollar cost average, figure out a budget for yourself monthly or weekly, however you want to split it up and then just set that up. You can set those up like on Coinbase on uh, Gemini, where it, it does it weekly. It pulls the money right out of your account and you don't even have to do anything. So it could, you could automate that process so that you, you don't see it and it just kind of happens. You know what I mean? Also, so that you don't forget. So that's it, guys. Um, I use this strategy all the time. I've used it with Bitcoin. I've used it even in the stock market. I still use it to this day. Every every Monday, I have um, an automated. Uh, it automatically already pulls money out of both my my account for the stock market and my account for Bitcoin. So I'm investing every single week in both stock markets and Bitcoin at the same time. And then I get that money and, and invest it and I dollar cost average my long term positions. So that's what I recommend to you guys. Um, you know, if you're not in a position or you want to add more to your position and you're not sure whether to wait or to jump in now, um, I say to just figure out that budget and then just split it into uh, weekly or monthly payments uh, investments. And, um, and that's going to be the safest route for you. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. I think I covered everything I wanted to touch on today. I've had this question by so many different people. Um, the question of the day today is going to be, what is the recommended strategy for you guys? If you're looking to buy right now, or if you have that question, whether or not to buy right now. Um, so just post the answer in the comments, uh, make sure to hit that like because once we get to 20 likes then it triggers the giveaway the giveaway of course is a free month's membership to our trading room um and that's basically it guys if you have any other questions just drop it in the comments please guys i appreciate you uh make sure to go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel we're trying to hit that uh 2100 subscribers now we're almost there uh, hit that like hit that notification bell so you know exactly when I drop videos I drop a video five times a week Monday through Friday uh, with tutorials and market an analysis and all sorts of fun stuff so thank you guys so much I appreciate you guys if you took the time to watch this video hopefully you guys learned and picked up some things out of here um, thanks guys I will see you on the next one as always peace and love